working for you. NBC Montana News at 5 starts right now. This just in, you're watching Missoula fire crews working to knock down flames on Missoula's north side. This is happening right now in the 900 block of Stoddard Street. Officials tell us witnesses heard an explosion. They don't know what caused the fire yet. No injuries reported right now. As soon as the fire is out, crews will begin working to find out more details. Hear from firefighters battling that blaze tonight at 6 o'clock. A new statewide law means municipal court judges can't appoint part-time assistant judges. Each city decides how many judges they need. In Missoula, it means taxpayers will shell out more. NBC Montana's Madison Donor is working for you to find out how much. Normally, Missoula Municipal Court Judge Kathleen Jenks would appoint new part-time judges. Now voters will decide. What we may encounter with three elected officials are judges that have a little different philosophy. In Missoula, we currently have one elected full-time judge and two part-time assistant judges. It's been this way since 2016. Now Missoula leaders want three full-time judges and the law says all must be elected. Making those positions full-time is going to cost the city and even though the legislature is requiring this, it's not giving the city any funding for added costs. There are space needs considerations to take into account, and that's why I can't give you any numbers today. We'll be building that budget request over this coming uh, spring and early summer. Right now, they don't know where a third courtroom will be, but they see it as a benefit from this new law. The court is working at capacity now with our three judges, and a third courtroom would ideally open up more time for people that have the right and the desire to come and talk with a judge. A public hearing will be held on the changes May 17th. Officials tell us no matter what, municipal court judges will be on the ballots because it's a law this fall. Candidates seeking a municipal court position can file now until June 21st. Reporting in Missoula, I'm Madison Donor, NBC Montana. New tonight, Governor Greg Gianforte is accepting applications and nominations for a judicial vacancy. It's for Cascade County's District Court. This position is open after the Senate declined to confirm former Governor Steve Bullock's nominee. Under a new law, the state eliminated its Judicial Nomination Commission, and Gianforte will directly nominate a replacement. Applications are due by June 1st. The appointee will be named in July and be required to run for election in 2022. Happening now, Ravalli County Sheriff's deputies report they've made contact with the man barricaded in a home in Corvallis. It's happening here at the Farm View Estates. Officials tell us they are negotiating, but the man is refusing to surrender. They say he has a warrant out for his arrest for violating pretrial release conditions. The sheriff says the goal is to work with the suspect toward a peaceful surrender. No one has been injured and will continue to follow this developing situation. New at 5 tonight, the Swan River National Wildlife Refuge will undergo a 600-acre restoration project thanks to a $1 million grant. It's from the North American Wetlands Conservation Act awarded to Swan Valley Connections in partnership with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Water once flowed through the 2,000-acre area refuge, but previous landowners dug ditches and drained the wetlands to make way for hay fields and pastures. Now conservationists are working to bring the water back. Um, basically, there's about a little over 600 acres of ditched and drained wetlands uh, on the refuge, and so the project will entail um, a lot of big heavy machinery um, grabbing old fill material from those uh, ditches when they originally created. Um, there's a big series of uh, berms or levees out there, too, that will, uh, will use that fill to basically put back in those ditches um, to restore the natural hydrology that once existed out there. The restoration will benefit native plants, waterfowl, and other wildlife that utilize the refuge, such as grizzly bears, says well. Crews will work this summer to bring back a more natural water flow. 
A gorgeous view looking towards the Bitterroot Valley from Missoula. Wow, our NBC Montana Sky team shot this earlier today before showers moved in around 2 o'clock. And here you can see blue skies with clouds, but certainly a lot of sunshine out there. And now here's a live look at current conditions in Missoula. That sun is shining again and things are beginning to dry out, it looks like. Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster, she joins us live from the Weather Center. Will we see any more showers tonight, Brooke? You know, we're going to continue to track showers as we finish out the evening, but we do have dry skies in the Forecast. However, we're going to take advantage and soak up as much moisture as we can because we do have some pretty uh, extensive drought conditions around western Montana and northwest Montana. You're seeing a little bit of light rain. That's kind of really what we've had today, just light rain, uh, more of a nuisance than anything. But at times, we've had some bursts of heavier showers. Some showers tracking through uh, the Garrison Junction area right now and as we continue on uh, through the next three hours we're going to continue to see these showers just passing by if you do have any outdoor plans you may find yourself dodging a little bit of wet weather but i'm uh, not expecting too much now we've picked up two hundredths of an inch of rainfall today in missoula three hundredths of an inch of rain in bozeman but we are still running a deficit for the month but we could make up for it as we head through the end of the week we are tracking our next weather maker more rain and even some snow in the forecast by the weekend i'll tell you where coming up and you can track changes in the forecast by downloading the NBC Montana weather app for your mobile phones and tablets. It's always free in your Apple or Android app stores. Flathead Electric Co-op promises no increase in total rate revenue this year, but the board did approve a change to residential rates. The co-op says members will see a decrease in energy charges and an increase in demand charge. Officials say it gives members more control over their electric bills. The co-op also says they now pay a premium for power used during peak hours. Those hours are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The demand charge will be set at 88 cents per kilowatt for the coming year. It's based on the highest demand measured during peak hours in each member's billing cycle. An update now on road work on U.S. Highway 2 from Hungry Horse to Staten Creek. Montana Department of Transportation officials say the 26-mile-long project is set to begin May 10th. The project is expected to impact the summer tour season with construction happening right from the west entrance of Glacier National Park. Drivers can expect delays. The project will include roadway resurfacing, pavement marking, repainting, guardrail upgrades, sidewalk upgrades, and much more. The project is expected to continue through to November. New information tonight in the search for a missing person on the Blackfeet Reservation. Blackfeet law enforcement now believe Leo Wagner is injured and on foot outside of St. Mary. He was last seen on April 27th around 6.35 p.m. near West Shore Road. Leo is a 26-year-old Native American man. He's 5'8 and weighs 165 pounds. He has brown eyes and brown hair. Officials tell us he was last seen wearing blue jeans and a white undershirt and a blue plaid short sleeve button up shirt. If you have any information, contact the Blackfeet Tribal Law Enforcement at 406-338-4000 or dial 911. A U.S. appeals court heard arguments in Idaho's transgender sports ban. Idaho became the first state in the nation to prohibit transgender women from playing on women's sports team. The lawsuit says the bill violates the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. The ruling could have far-reaching implications as more states seek to pass similar legislation. The three-judge panel gave little indication how it might rule. The 46th Big Fork Whitewater Festival is back after a one-year COVID-caused hiatus and river runners are rejoicing. The festival is Big Fork's longest-running event and will take place the weekend of May 28th to kick off summer. The event typically draws roughly 100 athletes and several hundred spectators. This year, they're anticipating a smaller turnout. It's a section of whitewater on the Swan River um, called the Wild Mile and it's about a mile long section of class 4 class fun whitewater and um, yeah we have kayaking events, rafting events and stand up paddleboard events and you can watch the event along the Swan River Nature Trail. There will also be vendor space throughout town and prizes. For more information visit NBCMontana.com the president's plan to expand universal pre-K. I'm Angela Brown in Washington. The massive price tag and the parents willing to pay. Plus, President Biden laid out new vaccination goals for the nation, how he plans to get kids vaccinated. Wednesday at 10, Montana families searching for housing. The demand for new construction is going up. 
and the cost of building supplies is skyrocketing. In this market today, there really are no deals. If you can get it, you better buy it. NBC Montana is working for you, exploring what's driving those building costs so high and if there's any relief in sight. An NBC Montana Working For You special report Wednesday at 10.